hello and welcome back to my channel um for tonight what, what i want to do is to talk about the installation and configuration of a uh, ubiquity bullet m2 um it's these devices from ubiquity there's actually two kinds this seems to be like the older one and this one is now the bullet titanium right it is believed to be a little bit more sturdy a little bit more stronger than the first version of the ubiquity bullet that came out the m2s these are used these are essentially access point or can act as client um, for distribution of uh, wireless signal or wi-fi they operate at a band of 2.4 um they're very tough they're very nice as for outdoor equipment and they also um, can have an attachment for an antenna to it and so you can attach an omnidirectional or a directional antenna to these for distribution of that wi-fi signal apart from that the connection for these is that it also brings a poe connector sorry for the loud noise um from ubiquity I, i've been using um, a lot of ubiquity products for a while um, they are very strong um, they're very reliable i haven't had any trouble with the ubiquity devices um, thus far i used to use some of the different types of devices or different brands out there and i found out that ubiquity was the brand that will hold up especially in, um, given our weather conditions with all the lightning and so forth in our region so let's jump into the configuration for it and see how it goes. One of the things, one, one, one reminder I have is that, um, that a lot of tutorials out there talk about the configuration, but they don't allow you to disable air mux, which is needed in order for you to have your Wi-Fi connected from your phone to that device or from your laptop or your computer devices to that particular um, M2 device. So let's jump into the configuration. All right, so by default, again, my IP address I'm saying is 192.168.1.20. And so I have that in already. So when I click on that, it um, says that your know, connection is not private. Click on advance to move on so that you can proceed into logging into the device. And should bring up this screen for the first. And so um, the by default the username is ubnt and your password is also ubnt and select our country three choices normally use um, us agree to their terms and conditions and then um, log in so the first thing we notice is that we want to First of all, this will be used as an access point because these can also be used as stations. And so having it as an access point, then we want to specify um, that we will be using it as an access point. So in the wireless tab, we'll select access point. And I, I like this particular device and I'll talk about it now. Um, there's a, another feature called AP repeater, uh, which you can simply link one device to the other. And so what you could have is one bullet set up as AP or as an access point repeater and the other one set up somewhere around um, and they can communicate with each other using the same um, wireless name using the same wireless name and of course then the person is able to roam around from one wireless device to the other so that's one great feature where they're simply that you can they can be used in repeater mode right so for us though sorry for us we're using it as an access point only um, because this is standing by itself in an open area to simply give the um, the clients um, internet access so we'll do the transparent bridge mode I will call my ID or the SSID that I want for the wireless that I want for the wireless um, as algorithm because that's the area I'm feeding it is important we change the channel width to 20 megahertz um, just to accommodate the devices that um, talk to each other um, in that frequency so 20 megahertz is used for your laptops the cell phones and so forth that you have around so the regular devices the antenna gain um, that I'm working with I will attach this device to a 16 dbi um, antenna so I'll put in there 16 
and I, I get that of course from the antenna itself that I purchased. Um, security, we don't have need for any, any security feature that we'll put in here um, for right now, so we'll leave it open and then this is of course for the um, persons to be able to put in some sort of password in order to log in. So notice it's asking you to change, I'll change that in a while to change the administrator password for the device. So we'll do that in a few. So after we have this and everything is set, I leave it as auto frequency. And of course you can choose um, the different frequencies based on where you are uh, or there's network congestion because of too many of the same devices around, then you can select a frequency. But for us, we'll leave it on auto because I know there's little to no interference in the area that I'm going to install this device. So let's click on change. Um, so it has, uh, it has made those changes to the name and so forth. I can click apply at this point just to have the device keep everything, but I will continue making changes to the device before I select the apply um, button. So let's do network. Um, configuration, we leave it as simple. I want to change the IP address to something a little bit more in line with what is there. So I'm changing it from the default to 192.168.1.32. Everything else is okay. STP, I don't need that. Um, STP is a spanning tree protocol, by the way, to allow you to move from one year, which is how your cell phones work. You can move from one um, cell site to another. In, in this case, you can move from one device to the other and it identifies um, the device. Kind of what I was talking about earlier with the two devices linked together. So change. So we only change the IP address there to 32. So I know that my next login will be 32 when I apply changes, but I'm not applying that yet. Um, the other important thing, we can go into system. We can change our device name, bullet M2. Um, I normally like to label, put in a label of where I'm actually am working. So my device name, I call bullet M2 at the Agro building. Administrator password, um, username, let's change that to admin. Uh, and again, remember, you can put this to anything you want, and then you can change the password here by clicking on that key. My current password is UDNT, and then, of course, I want to type in my new password, and then I can change. So, new password, verifying new password. Enter a valid new password for verification. This is a new password. That should do it. Yep. And so you notice that that little um, pop up that was saying um, to change the administrator password has gone away. Um, if you have configuration data you want to upload, um, in this case it, it would be always be it's always nice to back up your configuration data just in case something blows and you want to quickly jump and put that configuration onto our next device. Always a good idea. If you have that already, you can choose to upload to a file and it pushes that data onto the device for you, which makes it easy, right? Um, very important that a lot of people would miss this is that if I were to apply changes to this now and try to connect to it with my phone or with my laptop, it wouldn't connect wirelessly because we often overlook this section um, for the earmark setting that is on. If this, with this earmark setting on, other ubiquity devices can connect to the device, but you'll have a problem connecting your phones and uh, your laptops and so forth. I fought at this for a couple of hours trying to figure out what was wrong the first time I, I had uh, I configured a device like this um, and did a little bit of research. Not and apparently not much people have it on the web uh, that you turn off your Macs to have the other devices connect on, connect in, uh, being able to connect to it. So I'll disable your Macs, and again this allows for the other devices, um, the old devices that are not ubiquity based to connect to my device. Right? So change. And I'm pretty much good to go. So I've configured that. I have all my data for my wireless in uh, to what I want. I've configured my antenna um, gain. I can put in wireless security if I wanted to. I made changes to my IP address so that it's not the default IP address. Um, and I also did some changing of the, the password to the device and gave my device a name. So now I will apply and we'll get this installed at the client's place and see how it works. So that's it. That's your basic configuration for the Bullet M2. 
these are very durable devices. Um, they operate at the 2.4 gigahertz um, frequency. And so you, you have devices um, such as your phones and laptops that can connect to these easily. And of course, with the additional antenna, it gives you more coverage in terms of Wi-Fi coverage um, in a particular area. So these are great to cover small neighborhoods, a park, um, if you, and, and because it's outdoor, um, you can install it on the, in a rooftop or somewhere uh, on, on the outside if you want to cover large areas. Right? That's it for the video. Again, thank you for watching. Um, things to take away from the video is that when you're installing these devices, be sure to use the tough Ethernet cable um, that is suggested by the manufacturers along with the appropriate um, grounding devices. Also remember that if you want to connect the um, other devices to the, the bullet, for example, you want to connect your laptop, you want the Wi-Fi from your cell phone to be able to connect to these devices, that you want to make sure that Airmax is disabled. I struggled with this for a while. Um, it took me at least two hours just trying to figure out why this device will not connect to the bullet after I've installed and I went through all the procedures that I found online and finally I found a small article that said that you need to disable the earmax. So be sure to get that done. If you like videos like these, um, please leave a comment below telling me um, that you like the video. Um, if you have not subscribed to the channel, please do so and hit that notification bell in order to be notified whenever I um, output new videos like this. That's it. Go geek yourself.